the idea of a different, a different um, culture. You mention India as being a right. big kind of Well, first, having grown up in world. America as not even thinking of oneself as an American, because I was bilingual I was from French settlement in Louisiana, and my grandparents referred to people as Americans. They said, oh, there's an American in town. So then it was a very easy jump to my first trip to India, art in a very different non-Western context, where the physical realities of life are all there. You know, like art is used to death. Uh, it has food around it. It has, in the temples especially, uh, everybody can move through it at a very pedestrian level, and it's it's very grand still. And they can pour honey on and it. And they throw. anoint it and they do all these kinds of things where in the Christian iconographic distance, iconographic distance like the church or even the museum, you're the spectator and there is the art. And all of a sudden this made these ideas become very real that you could physically have some kind of connection to the work. I mean, my first interest in light, I think, was what the light felt like on my skin more than what it looked like to be bathed in light. This was the impressive aspect of it. And my first light pieces that I saw were there seeing light over, over the rice fields in Louisiana where you'd see the light coming from miles away and it would wash the landscape. And these attachments to nature and to natural material with light changed things very much. The first light pieces were not neon, they were incandescent light. The first neon piece was a piece that was using neon and cloth and it went off and on and it created this amazing altered perception of what you would look at it was like you looked at an after image some of it is totally environmental yeah and because the you walk through the becomes whole thing very important it's about the electrical charge the idea of when color became space on a sense and like in germany right. in the hallways yeah. Well, and that's like where that. the color then shifts to become a volume. Up and that's volume. its relationship to architecture again, where you create color as a volume. That was something that was going on for me in, in, the, in the early 70s, is beginning, going from that flat facades with objects distributed on the right. floor to give space to actually making cloistered space where you'd have an arcade and an arcade mm -hmm. and an object that defined the center and doing environments. They weren't really pieces at right. that point. And the whole space, the walls, everything else became very much part of the piece. Right. Um, and there, you know, so there was this kind of playing around with environment. Right. All my first pieces were just environments made up of details. And even as it went more decorative, the idea of a, of a reverent space, whether it was, you know, like a museum is reverent because it's revering our history and culture and these mm -hmm. objects we've made, or a church, and I wasn't religious, but you, I was dragged to every church in Europe right. as a kid. You know, you went in there and you had the painting and the sculpture and the stained glass and the architecture yeah. and fabric and, and furniture. Well, they were enormous. So you had a gut reaction to yeah. the whole combination of everything. Granted, you were looking at cathedrals and piazzas, but I think that these works call to mind um, uh, anthropological sites. Like you really sense that it's some kind of uh, unearthed kind of object in a way too, or some graphic plan of some city plan. Well, well it's interesting you say that. As a kid, you'd be taken to these Roman ruins. Yeah. And there would just be walls and maybe a pavement yeah. floor. Your yeah. imagination took yeah. over and built these things. Or if you went to the Roman Forum. Seeing all this tile work, too. And uh, yeah, so yeah, as a, in t a teenager, I worked on excavations. Yeah. And my job was to clean the mosaics. Right. Right. So you'd see all these tessera. They'd all be the same color gray. And you'd take right. acid and rub right. them. And then slowly, these images right. would come up, which right. again was kind of wild and, right. and it kind of exciting. My transition to public art was really making these spaces that at some point, either the art consultant or the architect or the owner of a corporation, GSA or something, said, well, what would you do to this space, right. rather than ever buying yeah. an object? Um, and that was my kind of hook into that. Right. And who knew? I, would never, I never thought that yeah. I would do public work. It wasn't really in the thing, yeah. but slowly, it's, it's interesting in careers, right. you know, how all of a sudden you start to do this and that ignites someone to say, oh, you should do this. And yeah. in a sense, I'm sure that the neon took you that way. Yes, well, the neon and the glass definitely did, and it's what led to the public work for me in a way that you could 
walked into the mirrored space, it reflected back, it created volume as color, and this kind of stuff. But I think the thing that changed for both of us in public work is that architects and architecture began to address art and artists in a very different way because before, the whole issue of public work was to put a work in a place, someplace in a corner, preferably. Yeah. And to introduce the idea of collaboration once again among artists and architect, which it did have a very early yeah. connection. But a lot of contemporary architects were not interested in collaborating or having a confrontation of the work to the architecture. And what we, why we were both hired, I think, as GSA project artists was that we could, in fact, collaborate with the architects. It was really interesting to make the work feel part of the space rather right. than separate from the space. Right. Yes. So that it was all a whole. And if the architecture had a certain power of some sort, by placing an object or doing something, you could kind of enhance that power and yes. make it even stronger right. in say your airport pieces, there's a real need to go from yeah, here to there. Yeah, it's about pedestrian flow and direction. It's about flow and direction. In a lobby for Prudential Life Insurance's home office in, in Newark, it's a block-long lobby, and you had to get to find in this whole block-long right. lobby. So all the terrazzo floors were done with a kind of modernist, kind of looks like a modernist painting, right. but all the movement of the shapes were, were leading you to a certain thing, yeah. which was not probably the norm yes. in, in making art. It was a kind of yeah. a, an interest and a kind of expansion which I was interested in when you began to get into the public arena. Yeah, getting out of the studio and having to really uh, have the interaction in the public arena and again changing the artistic arena because it goes from you know church art to the museum to public art and then the arena becomes once again a public participatory which and sort also of kind of politically to make art instead of for a collector who is going to who may, who may like it but also wanted to make an investment out of right. it versus something where people who knew nothing about art pass through and then it becomes mm. part of their daily life right. that politics was really interesting mm. for me to go into that but it has its drawbacks yeah. well it's interesting that we both eventually go back to studio work and i think the important thing about studio work is that it creates the form language to continue to work in a lot of different directions because if you don't readdress your form language you end up making the same thing all the time and that's also what was very exciting about public work if i work for a, a science marine science department of yeah. florida all or something all of a sudden there's all this new imagery sort of and, and and fascinating yeah. stuff to get into right. yet the downside of it is that you're, you're t it's exciting and you're getting new information, but you're always solving this problem and using this information right. and that, and you're not doing your own kind of uh, formal uh, continuum of your own yes. work.